Okay. We are trying this again. See what happens. How we looking? Any better? Okay. Cool. Great. How is everyone today? <laughs> I am Janaga. We are back with some Pokemon Pinball. Um, I'm not entirely sure what happened. Um, but my internet just took, like, the hardest dump ever <laughs> for, like, five minutes. Um, yeah, I just... I just, uh, switched, uh, just turned it off and on again real quick, and that seemed to fix it, but oh my god, I... I don't think it could have been any worse than had it just gone out. Um... Uh, in, in continuing in the realm of, uh, technical difficulties, I cannot find my... My what's it calls it for uh, my cable for my controller. So we are playing on good old keyboard today. So expect games to be lost a lot more quickly. <laughs> um, and I can't just like. I can't just, like, uh, take any old micro USB for it, because the way the controller is kind of designed, um, none of these matter, I have all of them. The way the controller is kind of designed is the input for the, um, I'm having such a hard time talking right now. <laughs> the input for the micro USB. Yeah, boy, we back. Uh, internet took took a hard dump. Took a big old poopy. Um, but we back. Um, here, I'll. This is start. Yeah. The. Once my stream catches up here. The input is like shaped in a specific way. So that basically only the cable that comes with it can fit in it. Um, I tried to use another one and it was like too wide and then there's a little nub in there. Um, to like catch a ridge for the, uh, for the cable. So until I find that cable... Um, I'm kind of just SOL as far as, uh, using that controller goes. Why not start the stream by taking on Groudon? I also just need to, like, fix my hair. I got my fan aiming into my room because it's, uh, what one might call toasty in here. And... The AC doesn't do the best job of reaching my room. So I got my door open with my fan on to kind of help circulate the air a little bit. Because, oh boy, was I toasty. Was I just a hot boy while I was trying to set everything up. Um... I think that the game audio, like, I think that the game audio is more, uh, is louder, loud enough to cover up the fan, but if you do hear it, I do apologize. But everything's fine, everything's fine. You know, we ain't, we ain't gonna let no, no hardcore poops get in the way of streaming this week. 
I'm, I'm making my commitments to maintain my stream schedule. And we keeping it. Now, unfortunately, uh, because I'm playing on keyboard instead of on controller, I have... I don't have an easy time to hit my tilt buttons. Um, so I'm not going to be able to incorporate the hardcore tilt strats that I usually do. You know, like every pro pinball player... Every pro pinball player knows that beating the machine is the best way to win. Man, this is not a great formation of rocks. Kind of a dick move to place that one right in front of you, but you know, it's fine. Um, in other news, there we go. Yes, what's up? In other news, I made a spreadsheet for this game. Um, to kind of help me out in what gets caught where. I had no idea that I had, like, next to nothing. Oh, excuse me, I'm like, I'm burping and totally unattractive ways. I never noticed that I had, like, next to nothing in Petalburg Woods. Um, and for as... that was the wrong button. For as much as I know about this game, what I do not know is that like, if every Pokemon is always immediately available, or if, like... Um, certain Pokemon get unlocked over time. Man, it is kind of rough Reno trying to play on the keyboard right now. Um, so for example, I've already got Dusclops. I should still be able to encounter Trico, Zigzagoon, Slackoff, and Mikado. Ideally. Um, so we're gonna chill in Petalburg Woods for a while to try and get them. 30 coins, just what I need. A beautiful compliment to my 99 coins. We also do have a lot of eggs to hatch. What's a going on, my guy? You came just in time to miss all the te technical difficulties. So, you know, good on ya. Just got back from the gym getting freaking JoJo swole. I think I actually do need a Whisper. We do already have Loudred and Xcloud, that I know for sure. Oh, just skirted right by me there. No! Oh, come on. Eh. There we go. Still to the eggs. Oh, do I not have love driven? I might not. I thought I did. I was mistaken. I should really move my other laptop to a more convenient location for me than, uh, you know, 
right behind me. But it's fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. We're doing, we're doing fine. Everything. All of it. Every little bit. It's just fine. Um, but, you know, we, we just have to chill. As, as most days. Just chilling and playing some pinball. Um, this is kind of a an answer to a question that somebody had asked on one of my uh, on my most recent ULD video about if the Diamond and Pearl remakes are going to be added. Now that they were announced, and the answer is yes, they... Oh! Yes, the Diamond and Pearl remakes will be added into... Added into the Ultimate Living decks once they release. Uh, obviously, we aren't going to be getting to them for a very long time. We're still on Pokemon Red, so... Sorry, I had to quench my thirst there. We're still on Pokemon Red, so it is definitely going to be a fat minute before we even get to the Diamond and Pearl games, but they will be added. As for uh, Legends Arceus, that one I don't know about. Um, it isn't, as far as I know, going to be a... yeah. It isn't, as far as I know, going to be a mainline game. I might still just play it, you know, kind of like how I'm playing pinball now. Um, Kind of, kind of like how I'm playing pinball now. I'm playing, you know, hey, slack off. Something that I do in between Ultimate Living Dex streams, but as far as including it in the Living Dex, uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see kind of what the game is about, what it's offering, and, and all that. Um. If it ends up being something that adds to uh, the, Di the Diamond and Pearl remakes, then for sure I'll be playing a ton of it. Just kind of like how in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, uh, playing Pokemon Ranger gives you access to Manaphy. Um, I will be playing through Pokemon Ranger a ton to get those Manaphy eggs. Alright, we've got Slack off now. Let's go ahead and evolve this boy. Man. Um, so if the Arceus game Add, add something like do like doing something in Arceus is the only way to get a particular Pokemon then for sure I'll be playing it to get that particular Pokemon because we 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 want this to be as legit we want this to be as legitimate as possible you know like, ideally, I don't want to use hacks and glitches and exploits and stuff to get all the Pokémon, which is why I'm only doing it for Mythicals. Um, but if there if there is a way to obtain one of those Pokémon that isn't super costly, then I'm certainly going to do it. You know, I already own the OG Pokémon Rangers, so... 
it will be used to get uh, Manaphy in the fourth gen. Man, I'm gonna have to play a lot of Pokemon Ranger. I just realized. Good thing it's a quick game. Um, but something like uh, using the promotional disc for Pokemon Coliseum to get Jirachi in Emeralds, I'm probably not going to do, because I, ju I just looked it up a couple of days ago, and that disc is like $200 or more, potentially. And somebody had asked me, why don't I just get the download the ISO and put it onto my Wii? And at that point, I'm already using like a glitch or a hack or an exploit or something, so I might as well just use the local Comeg glitch in Emeralds to get Jirachi. Uh, I have to use glitches anyway to get, you know, Celebi and Mew. And, and Deoxys, for that matter. I forget sometimes that Deoxys is a mythical. Um, so I might as well just also get Chirachi with it. Sorry, not, not being able to tilt is, uh, really making this difficult for me. I don't think I ever realized, like, just how much I rely on tilting until now. That was a, that was a solid combo. Oh. Not a great time, though. It's a decent time, one minute to take on Dusclops. Oh, that was the wrong way. Ah, oh, he had to stop moving right there. I wonder if I accidentally reversed my tilt buttons, because it feels like stuff is going the wrong way from what I would expect. It's probably just that I'm on a keyboard. It's fine. Um, but... Speaking of Pokemon uh, side games, I guess we could call them. Because um, obviously I'm not going to be on pinball for as long as it takes me to do the Ultimate Living deck. I mean, I could be, who knows. Latios and Latias have a less than 1% chance of spawning, so it could be forever. It took me years to complete it on my personal cartridge, but I also haven't been rigorously playing it for all those years, too. Um, but once I'm done with pinball, I think I'm gonna keep on keeping on with uh, Pokemon side games on the in-betweens. So, like, potentially Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Um, I was thinking of doing Conquest next, actually. I don't know, like... Oh, I actually didn't mean to travel. <clears throat> that was a misclick. I don't know what it is about Conquest, but, like, I love the game. But every time I play it, I stop playing it at a, at a specific spot. And it's not because it suddenly gets boring at that spot. <clears throat> I don't know why I can't keep my throat clear. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's because I need to hydrate. Mm -hmm. 
Just like all my homies should. Uh, it's not like it gets boring at that point, but it's just always like I will get to that spot and then I'll just stop playing and then not pick it back up. So I've never beaten Conquest. Hey Eric, yes, we is playing Pokemon. But I want to be Conquest. So I think that's going to be the next game after Pinball. If I ever clear Pinball. Or maybe I'll even just intersperse it with Pinball, you know? Who knows? Who knows what could happen? Could do like Pinball one week, and then Ultimate Living Dex, and then Pokemon Conquest, and then Ultimate Living Dex, and then back to Pinball. Alright, we got slacking. That was good. That's three Pokemon that we didn't have at the start of this stream. We now have. So we go back to the Pichu Bros. Yes. Alright, let's see if I can get an egg hatching here. A couple of streams ago, and people might not remember given that it was like four months ago at this point, uh, but a couple streams ago, I remember debating like which Pokemon I should be evolving, and I decided to not do Seedra into Kingdra for some reason. I like opted for somebody else. And I realized when I was making my spreadsheet, like, just how much of a mistake that was. Because Horsey is only obtainable in eggs. And there's a lot of Pokemon obtainable in eggs. So I need to be lucky enough to hit Horsey again in the eggs. And then evolve it all the way up. I think Golden is new, too. We didn't get a whole lot of time on the Sapphire board. because I lost it so quickly. We, we were on the ruby board for a very long time. Sorry, my six eyes were itching. But yeah, to, to get back to Kingdra, I need to get another horsey, and because it's going to prioritize all the Pokemon that I haven't caught, it's gonna be a while before I see Horsey again to get, uh, Kingdra. Oh, I thought I could get there before the Whirlpool. Don't do it! Oh, it did it. Ooh, still got him. We need a lot of mods in Pinball. Like, we're not really anywhere close to having everybody that we need in Pinball. And a large number of them are, are through hatching. So I need to do a ton of hatching, but I also need to catch a ton of Pokemon to get to Latios and Latias. Because they only have a 1% chance to spawn in general, but they only start spawning after, I think, 10 or 15 Pokemon. But then it's like, you know, you need to keep encountering Pokemon to see if it's going to be Latios or Latias. So I need a ton of hatches, 
I need a ton of catches. I just, I just need a lot. Okay, I am not gonna travel this time. But I think at the end of last one, we had, like, maybe around 70 Pokemon? And I th think there's 201 to catch. Not including the Johto starters, which you can't catch anyway without cheats. I mean, you can, you can catch them legitimately if you have the, the Game Boy cards for them. But obviously I do not. Oh, that is a terrible spot. Can I get the egg? Oh yeah, that's what's up. Also, the Johto starters take up, um... No, I can. But I, I was just about to explain why I don't think I want to. The Johto starters all... They're all only obtainable on the ruby board, because that's the board that utilizes them. But then they take up, like once once you're able to encounter them, they take up the, this is, this is great, we're ready to hatch as well now. They take up part of the 1% chance to encounter Latios. So effectively, the four of them then only have a 25% or a 0.25% chance to spawn. So it's only going to make it that much harder. And let me tell you, it is hard enough just trying to encounter one of the Eon Pokemon. That was a pretty legendary save, not gonna lie. Did I travel when I said I wasn't going to travel? I feel like I zoned out talking about something. <sighs> it's fine. Everything's fine. We need Pokemon in all these places anyway, so, you know, might as, might as well get them. According to the spreadsheet, I guess there's no single location where I have all of the Pokemon yet, aside from the... Uh, aside from the Mystery Cave, where you can get Jirachi, because there's only... Jirachi, the Regis, and Beldum. So that's like the only area that a Yabega. The only area that I have everything in. I think it's just that in like Petalburg Wood I've just encountered so many things that aren't like just a ton of silkoons and cascoons and stuff. There is one location that I do have most things. The Safari Zone. I have almost everything in the Safari Zone. There's just like three mods out of the 12 or so that I don't have there yet. So it's more likely just that. Um, not that we're gonna be in the Safari Zone here because that's only on the Ruby board. So we got we got a lot of a lot of catching to do. A lot of catching to do. This would have been an excellent time. It's still a really good time. 16 seconds ahead of, of the last one.
Wow, that was really fast. Sahulet. Not that it matters at all for the, uh, for the Pokédex, but damn, that was fast. Bagon all the way up to Salamence, which is definitely the- No! 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 <sighs> we can do this! We can do this! Legendary! <laughs> certain I was gonna lose it. Oh my god, it's so easy to travel in this board. Okay, I'm going to hit no this time. start, I guess. Oh, Metatite! This is good. This is actually good. Uh, I do not have Metacham. So... This is actually good. I can tell you who it's not. Pikachu. I don't know. I don't know how to read all that well, but that don't look like Pikachu. Eventually, I'll hit it into the into the Evo mark. There we go. All right, I'm actually go no, I should I should do Bagon because it's a daily. Move. Although Shellgun can actually be encountered in catch and catch a mode, so not being losing Bagon wouldn't be that bad. out in a minute and 30 seconds. We're getting there. There we go. Okay, it's either gonna be way up top or on the track. It's on the track. So while I was doing some googling to make my spreadsheet for what Pokemon were caught where, I discovered that an actual table like a real life pinball table was made for this game at in New York. And so that raises me the question of if it's still there, because it, it said that a real life table was made 
for the Poke Center building in New York. Which, I didn't even know there was a Poke Center building in New York. Which is awesome. Um, so I hope, I wonder if it's still there. And then I wonder when's the soonest time I can go play it. Because I, I enjoy just pinball in general. And someday maybe I'll stream just the, the VR pinball that I have. But I've been I've been to Nintendo Land in New York. And I can tell you that there weren't no table there. The only problem with VR Pinball is I don't know how I would read chat. Because it, it's... It's on my PlayStation. So I can't just put, like, a chat... quote-unquote overlay... into my PlayStation. As far as I know, I haven't actually researched it at all. But so I would have to be, like, constantly taking the headset off while I'm playing. There's a built-in chat feature. Okay, but is it for... Is it for streaming, or is it for, like, the PlayStation chat? That's the question. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I think that helps me... I think that helps me kind of make a decision to alternate Pokemon Pinball with Conquest to kind of break up the break up the pinballness of what's going on here. There's an option with streaming mixes. I've seen VR streamers who will stream like PC VR and it kind it creates like It basically just kind of creates, like, a wall, basically, off in the distance that displays the chat. Um, so that's how I would imagine it working for PlayStation VR. I don't, I don't know, it would be something to test for sure. But if that worked, I would probably start... I gotta stop holding that rail, that, uh... That, uh, that flipper open. When, when the ball goes around like that. Um, but if I, if I could get that to work, I would probably stream pinball. I would probably stream pinball more. Just regular pinball on on the collection of tables that I got on there. But then that's a lot of pinball going on on this channel that started as a Pokemon channel, so I would pr yeah, I would probably uh, intersperse the living decks, doing the living decks every two weeks, and then on those every two weeks, do Pokemon Pinball and Pokemon Conquest. And then just stream an extra day of the week, or every other week or something, for regular pinball. That could be exciting. Because one of the tables is... it's a table that was made... Uh, well, I guess all of the tables technically are specifically made for a video game. Um, but this table was 
like made with a video game in mind, I guess if that makes sense. Like a lot of tables on pinball video games are are made to resemble a traditional pinball table and like you know, every pinball table has like quests and stuff. If you could stop and just and just go down. Thank you. Traditional pinball tables have like their quests and, and missions and objectives and stuff to, to build up a score and all that, but then like, you know, once you ball out, you, uh, like, you record your score and that's it. But one of the tables is made to save progress between games. And like, you, you level up as you play multiple games to unlock like more quests and get more powerful for certain quests. It's, it's, it's like a, a medieval table, so you're like a knight basically, and you can like level up your skills and stuff. I don't play that one too much because my favorite board is the um, Martian Expedition table on there. Um, but I might try to see if there's a way to delete progress for it. And then start that one fresh on the stream. That could be really fun. Okay. I think that I have evolved everything that I have now. I think. I know, but I want to clear it for, like, that particular table. Because I have a really high score on the Martian Expedition table. Like, a really high score. <laughs> and I don't want that to go away. <laughs> I remember at the time, I was actually... Like, like, obviously there's, like, the global high scores that show the high scores of all time. Um... And I was nowhere near some of the top scores for that, but for the weekly high scores, I was in the top 10 <laughs> for that week, which was nuts. Like, I had, like, a three-hour game. It is just such a fun table, but yeah, I... I wouldn't want to delete my high score for that. Oh man, really thread the needle there and then immediately just had to shoot it into one. Right into the other one, excellent. Come on. More potential streaming news. Um, I know that everybody in chat here already knows, but for anybody who wanders across my YouTube channel, uh, Jonaga Inc., you can s see clearly at the top of the screen there, and watches this VOD later. I am a huge D&D nerd. And my favorite D&D &D podcast, not another D&D &D podcast, just announced on their Patreon yesterday or the day before, uh, officially announced their video game. They've been kind of like offhand mentioning stuff about it. Like they, they announced that they wanted to do one a long time ago and then offhand mentioning stuff about it occasionally, but there hasn't really been, like, 
progress updates or anything other than I know that Caldwell was helping do some of the art for it. That's like the only... And then they also st stopped releasing episodes once a one week a month to uh, work on side projects. One of those side projects they specifically mentioned was the video game, but they officially announced the video game yesterday or the day before called Not Another RPG, The Search for the Chrono Cruxes, which takes place in an alternate timeline of their first campaign. Uh, still don't have a release date for it, just, you know, that the official announcement was made and that work is being done on it. Uh, but when that comes out, Capsule... When that comes out, I think I'm going to stream that as well. I don't know why I throw a Pikachu over there. I have I have my ball saver. When that comes out, I think I'm gonna stream that as well. I don't think I'm going to save the VODs, though. I mean I'm going to record them, but I think I'm not going to have them stay up on Twitch. Um, and I'm not going to put them out on YouTube for at least a month or two, just so that other other people are encouraged to buy the game. <laughs> Do I want to? Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, once that comes out, I definitely am going to get it, am going to play it, so I might as well uh, probably stream it. That was such a pitiful hit. Um, this isn't so much the a Nannerfly effect type of situation. Like, the Nannerfly effect was specifically uh, different outcomes that would happen. Um, if one of their incredibly clutch good rolls became a nat one. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that to omit spoilers for anybody else watching. But if they were like in a really tense situation and it came down to a roll, the Nanafly effect tour was basically what would happen if this really important role turned out to be a nat one. Um, the video game, as far as it looks like in the short post that they gave it, is actually tied to the main story. Um, I thought I could thread the needle there. I was pretty close to it. Um, Eric, I want to tell you directly because I can't, I can't really talk about what it means <laughs> without majorly spoiling some super important plot points. Uh... Plot points that you would already know about, knowing how far you are. But for anybody who's, like, just watching, isn't very far in it, or is just watching and has gained interest in it, uh, details about, giving details about what the video game is, is, like, super spoiler heavy for some of, like, the main villains. Almost, man. You just got, like... Are you on 97 as in you've listened to 97, or you still have to listen to 97? Is it inclusive or exclusive? Because <laughs> that determines if you have three or four episodes left. Either way, I guess it's kind of like you've got either 9 hours or like 12 hours left. Aw, oh, come on! 
That that was some bullshit right there. <sighs> it had to respawn right into a twister. I wasn't counting, but I feel like I had to just get in like one or two more hits. It didn't even give me the chance. Why am I going for Evo? I, I don't need Evo. I just got back to the Shadowfell saga last night at work, which is, I think episode 59 is the, be the beginning of Shadowfell. So super excited, it's my favorite arc. My favorite arc with my favorite guest star. Yeah, Daddy Dead Eye. And I really want to know what they have to say about it on the short rest, so. Yeah. The best guest, although I f a good argument could be made for any of their guests, really. Yeah, the only one who knew how D&D &D works. Adam didn't... Adam didn't really... Adam was really good at the game, but that... His guest appearance on NatPod was his first time playing D&D. &D. Ever. So. Or do you mean the best guess except for Adam? As opposed to... I don't think I have Wurmple either. I love Adam, and I wish that Adam Ruins Everything was on Dropout. Because I watched it all the time when it was still releasing on College Humor's YouTube channel. And then he had to go and get that frickin' TV contract. <laughs> Which, good for him, but like, I don't have network television. <laughs> so now I can't watch Adam Ruins Everything. <laughs> I know it's out there somewhere, but I also like when it when it comes to you know supporting creators and stuff. I want to be able to like it doesn't matter. I want to actually be able to like view it in a way that supports them. So, like, if I watch it on TV, obviously that boosts ratings for the show. Uh, same as if I had some way to watch it on the network's websites. Versus if I watch clips of it that somebody puts up on Reddit or on, on YouTube that isn't on the College Humor channel. That doesn't really support him, you know? That's one of the main reasons that I opted to get Dropout to watch Dimension 20 um, instead of watching it on YouTube, because I know it's, it's more supportive to watch it on Dropout because it's their personal streaming, the, the College Humor Studios personal streaming service rather than any kind of revenue that they could get on YouTube. A magic show in that they play magic. Or 
we're not like they talk about magic. Uh, you gotta catch up on Elderborn, though. Oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I, I just wish that Adam Ruins Everything was on Dropout, but I think I think that he's completely separate from College Humor, from the company College Humor now. Much like um, Zack is no longer a part of College Humor. Although I have to wonder, because Dimension 20, I think, is still ongoing. And they just keep changing campaigns. Now, I've only watched the... the Fantasy High campaign. I just finished their first season of it. Fuck. Um, and Zack was on it. So I don't I don't know when he left college humor. And if that has any impact on him being able to play on Dimension 20. So, finally! So, I don't know, maybe in, in one of their other campaigns, Zack just ain't there. Sounds good, baby. I mean, I know, they could also just run with the regular cast that they have, because it's a six-party cast. So, it's not like it would be detrimental to drop down to five people. If they did have to replace him, though, I mean, I suppose Mike Trap would be a great substitute because he has experience playing D&D. &D. Um, and I listened to him a bit on the uh, episodes that Snadpod put out for Zack's campaign, the Rotating Heroes podcast. Um, so I think that Mike would be great for Dimension 20 as well, but honestly, I really want to see Grant O'Brien play d, &D. <laughs> I think that, like, four players... I, don't, I honestly don't even know if I should have traveled. I don't think it matters. Um, but I think that four players is a pretty optimal number of players to have. Just because it allows people to really get into what role they serve in the party without really having to serve multiple roles. Not to say that it's impossible, you know, to run a campaign with three or even two people. But 
those fewer people kind of have to assume multiple roles in the party. Like, I agree with something that you told us early on, that nobody is really playing a support class for us right now. Um, although Joey is kind of going to be stepping into that role a little more. But, like, Joey's our only healer. <laughs> So if something happens to Joey, like, me and X are going to be screwed if we're not in a great position. Whereas in something like NADPOD, um, Caldwell plays a paladin, and paladins have their lay on hands and their aura, and, uh... A lot of spells that help with, like, just protecting your allies, like being able to cast shield on them or giving them spirit guardians. I looked at chat right as you sent that, right as the ball was going away, so I'm blaming you for that one. <laughs> But, Bev, but Paladins also have, you know, all of their smites, which can deal massive amounts of damage. Um, whereas Emily, playing a druid... Uh, why did I waste it again? I need my Pika Bros back. <laughs> When I don't have the Pika Bros, I am just horrible at managing. At managing Pikachu's uh, Thunderbolts. This is actually good. I th think that I caught Whismur while we were s at the beginning while we were still on Ruby. And then lost the game. So getting Loudrin here now is really good for me. I don't think our problem is so much that, it's that we don't have a lot of support in our party right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm offering, like, a little bit of support. Well, no, I'm not, actually, because I can't cast shield on somebody else. But once I multi-class into wizard... I'll be able to... <clears throat> I'll be able to support a little bit better. Um, because, like, I'll be able to cast stuff on my allies. Uh, once I reach level 6, I think, in my, in my subclass. Cool, Sir Skid is new. We are getting a ton of new mobs this stream, which is awesome. Um, but once I get to level 6, then I think I can start projecting my ward onto my party members, which will help soak damage and stuff. Um, X being a monk, especially because I think he solidified that he took, um, like... Way of the Drunken Fist. There isn't a whole lot... Yeah, Drunken Master. There isn't a whole lot that he can do to support everybody else. Like, he's really just kind of going to end up being a huge damage dealer. Which is already, though, something that I started building my character to be, is just a huge damage dealer. So, and 
we're already level three, so to get to level six in wizard, if I was multi-classing right now, would be level nine is the earliest that I could project my ward onto my allies. So... Joey is really going to be the one carrying the party for a while. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, time it for right when he starts walking. Oh my god, my timing is so off right now. If I could hold onto the ball. There we go. I can also hit him from behind at any time like I just did right there, but it's obviously just way easier to hit him from the front. It feels like he takes just a random amount of hits. I don't feel like I've hit him that many times. But he went down so fast. I should start evolving, actually. I forgot that I had Cascoon. So that kind of sucks. I just want to go around the table. Thank you. Now I need to get on the track, and now that I need to get on the track, I'm not going to get on the track. I'm not going to, like, intentionally be going out of my way to go to stuff that you're not prepped for. Um... But, like... I... Oh, you know what? That works! Oh my god, that is... That is a strat right there to get... To get to that one on the track if I can't aim for shit. That was pretty clutch right there. Just lose the ball while I still have the saber. So now I need to get into the middle of the shroomish, which is a pretty horrible spot. I think I hit the wrong bumper. Or the wrong tilts. I'm probably not gonna hit this Evo, but honestly, it's fine. We have a Dust Tox anyway. So I guess it's a good thing I didn't actually hit Surf Skip. Get in the middle! Ah. Two Pokemon that I need to evolve. Oh wait, do I have Hardyama? No, I don't. I have three. Oh no. Okay, well Hariyama and Loudred I can get in catch em modes. So Surskit's going to be the hardest one to find again. Alright, just let the ball fall. Just know that I, uh, I'm gonna tell you ahead of time, I definitely want to speak with some of uh, my professors. I will tell you that.
because I do... So I already know I want to talk to my astronomy professor. Um... I'll probably want to speak with one of my magic professors because I do want to start multi-classing soon. I don't know if it's going to be at level 4 because I kind of want the ability score improvement first. Um, but I do also need to be level 2 in wizard to subclass to get my arcane ward, so I might want to multi-class at level 4. Um, and I feel that story-wise a good way for that to make sense is to talk to a magic professor. Just letting you know, I have a couple of prof have a couple of profs ready. Prof bros. Please. Eh, there we go. No! Oh, I have to save her anyway, it's fine. You really should. You should also write those names down. because of the naming convention that me and Joey established. <laughs> what I do when I'm creating NPCs that I know uh, is going to be around for you guys to accomplish or to, to meet up with um, like when you guys met all those people on that sub-island the other week. Um, I'll write down their name, um, and just a couple of sentences, like their name, what race they are, pretty much, and just a couple of sentences about how they feel about the current situation. That really just gives me, like when we're in the middle of a session, um, a concrete idea of their personality that I can draw off of at any given moment. like the only one that I wrote down um, specifically absolutely hates it here hates it on that island um, hates everybody else hates the situation uh, and would do anything to get off the island as opposed to everybody else I didn't write down I didn't necessarily write down whether or not they were complacent, um, but I did write down, like, if they had given up hope, if they still had hope, um, like, just their feelings on the situation of being stuck. The NPC that you love, but also just straight up don't trust. <laughs> I'm honestly happy that you guys didn't ask him to accompany you into the tower. Uh, because I was I was expecting you guys to want to take jewels into the tower. Um, so I made a quick little character for him. 
but I had nothing made for the dwarf. <laughs> I was just kind of like, uh... <laughs> I guess he'd probably be a barbarian, but he's a smith, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Not that it wouldn't make no sense, but I, I just feel like a smith wouldn't be... I feel like a barbarian wouldn't have the patience to be a smith. You know? I know they're very different, but uh, uh, again, like, I don't think a barbarian would necessarily have the the patience to be a smith. Although I did, uh, we did establish that he can <laughs> uh, temper metal with his bare hands, so maybe a barbarian would have been good enough. This is my... I'm not gonna rant about it. I think I've already ranted about it in another stream, just that I hate that position in particular. I definitely would not have been able to just make him a wizard on the fly. <laughs> I would think, like, maybe potentially Artificer but I know so little about building artificers. Please. Oh. Just let me, please. I think the easiest way to get to that one would like be around the back and then tilt into it, but I'm just like so f Oh, go, 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 go! <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> it's fine. a ball upgrade, I don't really care. Yeah, and then you immediately rolled good persuasion so that he wasn't pissed at you for humble bragging. <laughs> speak zero lies. That's why I had you roll persuasion. But it's not about whether or not you're speaking lies, it's about how he uh, feels about you basically belittling your party mates to say that you were the one who did the heavy lifting in the last tower. <laughs> right in front of Pelipper. Okay. It's probably because he's P-flashing right now. 
uh, that giant ass treant had 50 HP, but he also had ways to heal, which is why it took a while to, to get him down. That and the fact that you guys dealt so little damage to him for so long because none of you had the idea to hit him with a staff. Corfish, that's new. You could have, but that's what, a D4 of damage? <laughs> Um, depending on what level we are when we get to that dungeon's boss, like, you guys were level 2 when you faced that tree, and remember. So... We're level 3 now. I don't know if you plan on us leveling up. Before then. But... You're also giving us our magic stuff. Ah, uh, you guys were level 2 when you guys fought the Treant. Really thread the needle on these dust gulps, there we go. I think I did level you guys up though after you beat the tower. Spice in that bad boy. Not to mention, I feel like the gap between level 2 and level 3 is huge. Like, sure, from level 1 to level 2, like, you basically almost double your HP. So it lets you it lets you take them big hits, but like level three most classes start specializing. You have even more HP. Yeah, level one and two is basically the tutorial. That's a great way to put it. Um I'm not saying, like, give the boss, like, 200 HP or something, but, you know. Around the world. It also depends on if you want to give the boss some kind of healing. No! <sighs> we didn't get the Crawdons. It's fine. Alright, let's take a look at our decks here now. We're at 95. Almost halfway there. The hardest thing is going to be trying to get Pichu. <laughs> Pichu, Latios, and Latias are going to be the biggest problems. Um, I'm really hoping that they're not going to be the last three Pokemon. That's all I really hope. Like, if we can encounter them while we're catching... 
the rest of them, that would be great. Otherwise, it's going to be a real grind fest. Looking for them. Um, yeah, I don't... I suppose we can. So who are some of the new peoples? Wormpole was new. Surskid Masquerade. We got the Slackoth line. Whismer. Its whole line, actually, too. Makuita, Goldine, and Seeking. Uh, got Metacham. We, ha we had Metatite in a previous stream, but I failed to evolve it, so now we got Metacham as well. Who else was new here? Corfish, who we've sadly failed to evolve. R.I.P. Corfish. Absol. Forgot about Absol. Absol was new. The big online, that was huge. Yeah. Good catch-ins today. Well, unfortunately, um, I think that's where I'm going to end this stream. It was a bit shorter. We had some super exciting technical difficulties at the beginning, which aren't going to go into the VOD, because <laughs> I started a new recording session. Also, it would just be boring for anybody who was watching the VOD. Uh, the VOD, by the way, is most likely going to go up tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time uh, before work to wait for it to upload. Bye, Eric. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, so the VOD will be going up hopefully tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow at the latest, I should say. Hopefully tonight, that would be great. Um, but yeah, next week, Thursday, we will be back with some more Pokemon Red action. Um, and the next Ultimate Living Dex video. And if I don't, I owe Joey, I owe Joe LeMain a gift sub for each one of those that I miss. So if I don't stream, I owe him a gift sub. If I don't put up a video, I owe him a gift sub. And yeah. Um, after that will probably be another pinball stream. I've got to think about uh, if I want to start interspersing Conquest and adding in pinball and all that stuff into my schedule. Hi, Joey. You're just in time to <laughs> catch the end of the stream. Um, I balled out, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I'm also going to look for my cord for the controller because uh, yeah, it is it is easier <laughs> to play on controller than it is on keyboard. Simply because it is easier for me to tilt with the controller. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if you came back right as I was saying, or right after, but next week you will de-stream. If I don't stream, I owe you a gift sub. If I miss the video, I owe you a gift sub. So, um, I would start a new game, but to start a new game for just a half hour, yeah, I think, I think I'll just call it here. So, thank you everybody so much for joining me. I, I'm, I'm gonna keep up, and if I don't, I'm only helping you. So, thank you everybody so much for joining me, uh, and I will catch you all in the next video. You gonna get more subs if I don't keep, if I don't keep up. Farewell, everybody. <laughs>